Joining us today is a member of the legendary Hart family. This man has wrestled. He's produced television. He's helped book the territory. He's trained future talents. He's done it all. Can't wait to talk to him, Mr. Ross Hart. Ross, thank you so much for joining me today. Pleasure to be on your show, Michael. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm super excited. You know, everyone who gets involved in wrestling, they always say wrestling's in their blood. Wrestling's in their blood. Wrestling is in your blood. What was it like as a kid, as a member of the Hart family? Was it always predetermined you were going to get involved in the business or is it something you really wanted to do? Um, I, I think as I grew up, I knew I'd be involved in some way. I didn't know how. Um, you know, I think a lot of us, you know, uh, idolized some of the, the wrestlers we grew up with. So, you know, best case scenario would have been if I could have uh, wrestled like some of my brothers. But um, I kind of understood from an early point that maybe wasn't going to be where I best contributed. Although I did have some matches, but uh, I maybe just didn't have the, 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 the size or technique that uh, Owen and Brett did. But um, uh, I contributed in, in a lot of other ways, you know, working behind the scenes, you know, uh, writing the programs, uh, um, setting up uh, shows in advance, uh, doing a TV production, uh, helping train guys. So uh, for me, I had a number of uh, roles, you know, which uh, which was great, but it was, it wasn't uh, as much about wrestling and actually performing in the ring. Although, you know, I did have my opportunity to do that as well, but, uh, um, and, and, it, and it was great because, uh, uh, I eventually went into teaching, you know, after uh, I kind of retired or stepped down from wrestling duties, but uh, all all the practice I had writing programs and press releases and uh, um, magazine articles, you know, to, to give our wrestlers publicity uh, made me a better teacher, you know, a better writer, a better communicator, and I could teach students how to uh, write essays and uh, uh, position papers. So um, it, it was kind of nice that a lot of the skills I grew grew up with in the wrestling industry and having my mom as a, um, an English major, you know, who would always correct me on my grammar and speaking, um, I could transfer those skills, um, you know, to, to uh, teaching and uh, uh, working with kids and developing them um, throughout high school. You said earlier that you watch wrestlers, you, you, you want to get a chance to wrestle some of the wrestlers you idolized. Who that your dad brought into your territory were your favorites as a kid? Oh, geez. Um, on different levels, I think uh, the classic wrestlers I really enjoyed, uh, Dory and Terry Funk and Harley Race and Billy Robinson. Um, these were guys that would go out there and have a one-hour Broadway and make it look easy. Um, just, just great matches um, and just great technicians in the ring. As far as uh, hardcore brawlers, guys like Abdul the Butcher, uh, the Stomper, um, Leo Burke was another one. He was he was a great technical wrestler, and he helped uh, uh, he helped my brother Brett in his formative years. Uh, Dynamite Kid and Davy Boy Smith, you know, for uh, their agility, their speed, um, and and they were just great individual and tag team technicians as well. So um, over the years, uh, there there were just so many, you know, that uh, had long lasting impressions on me and uh, contributed so much to the whole industry. Did your dad actually break you in? Uh, he didn't actually break me in. You know, I, I would work out and train with him sometimes in the dungeon. He would, he would teach me more of the submission style wrestling, but uh, um, I kind of learned a lot watching my brothers, uh, Bruce and, and Keith and uh, Brett, you know, I would get to watch them uh, as, as they were training and working out in the dungeon. So um you know, my dad always would give me pointers, though, and, you know, he he never stopped me from pursuing wrestling, but he always said, you you have to get an education first and have something else lined up, because wrestling could be a very um, unpredictable industry, and, and there wasn't always a guaranteed placement or employment in it, you know, so he said, uh, have something else, you know, as, as a, an occupation, and... Uh, and, and follow that. And if you can do wrestling uh, with that on the side, you can. And that's what I did. You know, I, uh, I stayed involved with wrestling and I had, you know, different, uh, different jobs, but I got my university degree and became a teacher. But um, I, I would just say I, I picked up and learned from watching so many of these guys uh, 
wrestling on on our shows and um and, and working out in the dungeon but my dad certainly um taught me a lot though about amateur wrestling and and uh um how to defend myself basically and uh uh a lot about professional wrestling too and just just very uh basic logics which unfortunately a lot of guys don't seem to learn today you know like always uh lock up strong and um uh make it look like a real struggle in there and um you know, to try to go behind or maneuver your opponent rather than trying to do uh, high spots and uh, things off the ropes and turnbuckles. You know, you you should kind of uh, gradually get to that level in a match. But, um, you know, my dad always uh, focused on the basics and ma- making it look like a real contest in there and not just a bunch of uh, choreographed high spots or stunts. Right. What was it like being the the wrestling kid going to school? Were the other kids were they impressed by it? Did they challenge you a lot? I mean, did you have to did you have to defend your family business? What was that like? Yeah, it was mixed. You know, uh, I had a lot of kids that idolized me because they would watch the wrestling on TV, and you know, my last name was Hart, so they uh, they identified me right away with uh, the wrestling show, and every everybody watched it on TV on Saturdays. Um, so you know, I had a lot of kids that idolized me and. Uh, wanted to be my friend so they could uh, um, hang out with me and ask me questions about the wrestling. And then some of them who were lucky maybe to go with me to some of the shows on the Friday night. And it was kind of nice. My dad would, uh, as busy as he was, um, you know, looking after all the matches and the payroll, uh, he would take the time to pick up these kids. Um, sometimes, you know, we'd have to ask him, can I, can I bring some friends to the show? And uh, he would always, uh, take the time to pick them up at a designated spot and then uh, get them home after the shows, you know, so they got home safely and they had a great night, you know, they got to see uh, uh, the whole show and just all the dynamics of uh, a wrestling show and uh, uh, how the fans reacted. Cause it, you know, it was uh, like a live uh, theater performance, you know, and, and, and everybody loved it. You know, you, you, uh, you love to cheer the, the baby faces. You, you love to, boo the heels and, and just watch all the uh, dynamics, you know, and, uh, um, you know, and our, our shows were pretty good. You know, we, we had some really uh, great performers and the, there was always a lot of uh, variety of, of styles and characters. So uh, it was great. But I had other kids, too, that sometimes challenged me. Um, you know, they they, uh, they they knew to push my buttons. All they had to say was, you know, they're a bunch of phony actors or they're they're not real uh fighters and uh everything staged and choreographed or the oldest myth was that they use uh ketchup or blood capsules when they <laughs> you know so I quite often uh you know defend the industry and, and if kids got under my skin yeah you know then i would uh uh be up to the challenge and uh you know sometimes i i had some uh some altercations or fights you know uh it's because i was uh, defending the honor of uh, my dad's profession and uh you know, the wrestlers who I grew up and idolized. So it was kind of a mixed bag, but, um, you know, it was, it was just a lot of notoriety that I had growing up and uh, I wouldn't have traded it for anything else. Michael, Michael. It, was a, it was a pleasure for me to be on your show and uh, you, you, you asked some very candid questions. And it brought a lot of great memories back uh, from the Stampede promotion, but um, Brett's uh, son Dallas has kind of launched a new promotion here. It's called Dungeon Pro Wrestling. Uh, they've had about five shows in Calgary over the last year. And uh, it seemed to be really catching on. They've been getting uh, big crowds and uh, um, uh, it's, it's uh, one of the, I think one of the best independent promotions going in, in Canada right now, but hopefully um, the promotion can spread to Edmonton and uh, Saskatoon and Regina and uh, maybe uh maybe other centers in Western Canada, even Vancouver and Winnipeg. But uh, right now they're just getting established uh, in Calgary and some of their shows have been uh, online as well. And uh, um, I think it's just uh, an incredible promotion. My nephew, Harry, Harry uh, Smith has been wrestling on those shows as well. Um, So, um, and Brett's been involved, I guess, behind the scenes, Um, but he's, he's certainly, certainly supported Dallas and, in this bid and uh you know i i hope it's uh a new promotion you know that's able to uh kind of bring back uh wrestling on a on a higher level it's there's certainly more of an emphasis on uh real wrestling and uh um 
and characters in the ring. You know, it just it's, it's it seems to be more of a traditional style, and yet it's very um, progressive. You know, and we've had uh, some really good good talent working on shows here. So um, uh, I think the dungeon promotion is uh, just going to get bigger and bigger, and uh, um, hopefully, it's it's uh, established all across Western Canada in, in the next year. 